So to start, can we have you say and spell your name? Jackie Hudspeth, J-A-C-K-I-E, Hudspeth, H-U-D-S-P-E-T-H. Awesome. Well, today is Thursday, July 26th, and we are at Bombshell Beer Company in uh, Holly Springs, North Carolina. So Jackie, just to start with, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? How, how did you get here? Okay, sure. Um, I'm a native of North Carolina, as you can probably tell. Um, I grew up in this area. I went to college at Appalachian, and when I graduated, I worked in the medical field for about 10 years uh, in the sales part of it. And then I was a stay-at-home mom for about 20 years. So um, I live right here in Holly Springs, and um, I'm now part owner of a brewery. Well, how did you how did you get involved in kind of the opening of the brewery? Okay, uh, all three of us live in the same neighborhood, and we were friends. We played golf together. We hung out up at the club, and of course, enjoyed drinking beer together. Um, so we kind of formed a friendship. And I had heard that they were thinking of opening a brewery, so I started talking to them a little bit more about it, and. They were home brewing on the weekends, and I'd go over to their house and hang out and home brew. And at that time, they worked um, full time, you know, in corporate world. And like I said, I was a stay-at-home mom. And they got to thinking that I would be a good fit. You know, that I had, you know, we all have different qualities and talents that we bring to the business. And um, I'm real hands-on, a worker bee, do everything myself around the house: plumbing, electrical, painting. Um, so the fact that I was a stay-at-home mom w was a perfect idea for them because they continued to work their full-time jobs when we were opening the business. So um, once we sat down and ironed out some of the nitty-gritty business arrangements, um, I, I was all in. Um, so what is your, your responsibility? What, what, what pieces do you manage? Right, here? okay. Um, I'm kind of the facility manager and I'm in charge of distribution. So. Um, I, I made all the deliveries myself the first two years. I have lots of bruises and scars to show for it. And you won't believe the looks I would get when they see this little 100 pound lady bringing a half barrel of beer in the kitchen. But that's what you do when you first open a business. You have to do a lot of the work yourself. So now I have two full-time drivers and I coordinate their routes for them, you know, get invoices ready. And also when they get back, you know, we have to bring in the invoices and process them. Yeah. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the challenges that you faced, that you guys faced when you were first getting started? There were a lot. You know, it was a huge learning curve for all three of us. And being ladies, we certainly didn't know much about the electrical components or the plumbing or any of the work that had to be done in the brewery. So we had to rely on contractors to do all of the work. Um, and that, that was a bit of a challenge. Um, our first brewer had a lot of experience in knowing how to actually build a brewery from ground up, hook it all up and everything. So he did a lot of that work. Um, and, and then there was a the challenge of, you know, hiring salespeople. Do we want full-time, part-time? How do we start this? You know, we didn't want to just send people out there and all of a sudden we run out of beer. So in the, it was a big learning curve in the beginning, just trying to um, ease into it, not too fast. But, but do it slowly and, and do it right. Yeah. Um, are there particular kind of people or groups or resources that y'all drew on when you were opening and growing? Um, somewhat, yes. I'll, one of my fondest memories, um, I think we'd just barely been open and um, the, head, the owners of Highlands Brewery, Oscar and Leah, his daughter, they stopped by to see us. And um, I was just like, oh, so cool, you know, because I love that brewery. And they've, they've been around a long time. And they gave us a lot of advice and kind of, um, you know, don't try to grow too fast, too quick, you know, self-distribute for as long as you can, you know, make sure you make really good, solid quality beers, you know, before you just start trying to make too many beers. So they were, that just what I remember the most is, is their advice and uh, looking up to them and uh, appreciating them coming by. Yeah. Um, so do you, how would you describe your typical week around the brewery if there is such a thing? Yeah, um, it, it, it's pretty much at this point, you know, in the beginning uh, I was all over the place. You know, we were still doing painting here and painting there and kind of flying by the seat of our pants. But now that we've been open four and a half years, things have settled down to the point where we all pretty much have 
a regular routine each day. Um, you know, Ellen's the business manager and Michelle's the sales manager and kind of does social media. And like I said, I'm kind of, I come in each day and um, get my delivery team on the road, make sure um, everything, all the product is good to go. And um, if we have a stopped up toilet, I have to take care of that. Being that I kind of take care of the uh, facility, I replace light bulbs, I paint little places on the wall. Um, and I'm also in charge of the charities that come to us for contributions. I get a lot of emails, I spend a lot of time um, getting back in touch with them and seeing what we can do to contribute and how we can help. And as far as the community goes, I'm kind of in charge of a lot of activities that go on here. Um, so my typical day, while the guys are out on the road, will probably be emailing, uh, sending out paperwork, and also, like I said, just doing whatever has to be done. A lot of times I have to make emergency deliveries. Our team is already on the road, and all of a sudden the sales rep calls and goes, can it please go out today? They really need it. And I'm like, I got it. Throw it in my Tahoe, and off I go. So I, I get a lot of those kind of days, too. Or I, you know, I have to take the vans and get them inspected and get work done on them, and one's broke down, and i got to figure out how we're going to solve for that. So that's yeah. kind, of, kind of my life around here. <laughs> And I help in the back. I help in the brewery, um, cleaning kegs and just organizing and doing whatever Devin asks. I'm always glad to help. Yeah. So how would you personally, how would you define the mission of Bombshell? Well, it, it has evolved over the last four years. When we first opened, our, our mission or our goal was to make very approachable beers that a lot of people who weren't really into craft beer, but they kind of wanted to be a part of the scene, um, you know, make beers that a lot of light beer drinkers would enjoy, but also um, have a full range of other beers as well. So we, I guess our mission in the beginning was to make, like I said, very light approachable beers, but now we've realized that you kind of got to make what the market asks for or what will sell. And we know we have to do a lot of special beers, a lot of one-offs, and we've been doing a lot of special IPAs every month. So um, we just wanted to be a really friendly community place for all of our friends and neighbors and people come to enjoy our beer. So um, I guess our mission is still to be considered um, a brewery that makes really good, solid, approachable beers and to um, provide a place where people can come and enjoy it and make friends and bring their dogs and their kids. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you were the person who kind of coordinates a lot of the charity mm -hmm. work. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of, the ch of working with those charities and community engagement work that's done here? Um, sure. Um, well, we hold events um, weekly. Um, we do what we call the first Friday, and that's when um, you know, charitable organizations come in, we set it up ahead of time, we, we print special glassware, so, you know, get a commemorative glass to keep, and, um, you know, 10 percent of the money we raise um, goes toward that. Um, we usually have um, a band, and we, we make it a real fun night, and so a lot of charities have loved to do that, you know, they, we, like I said, I get a lot of emails, and the whole year filled up really fast, so we did that the first Friday of the month, and now we've gotten so many requests that now we're also now doing another one called Fundraiser Friday, and that's on the um, third Fridays of the month, I think. So um, having events here is a big part of it, but probably the biggest part of the charity type thing is donating something to, their, say, they're having a golf tournament or they're having a, a gala or, you know, some kind of big function at a country club. and. So we'll donate beer to those type things, or we'll um, donate something for their silent auction. So I'm, I'm always putting together these packages and saying what day they can come pick it up, or would you like me to bring it to you? So we try to give as much as we can. It's hard, you know, when you're a small business, but um, it, we feel like it's important, especially yeah. anything that involves cancer, um, terminal you know, illnesses. Uh, we've held events here for particular families that are suffering um, a personal crisis or, and they're very successful. You know, we've raised a lot of money for people here in our community, so. Right. So kind of looking back at your expectations when the brewery first opened or when y'all were first planning the brewery even, what are the big, are there any big surprises 
that kind of stand out? Anything that, that you didn't anticipate? Uh, right well, having to work seven days a week, <laughs> eight hours a day, that was a big surprise. You know, I came from a stay-at-home mom. And the timing was right because my two boys had just gone off to college, so I, I did have the time. But I was very surprised at how much work was involved um, when you're an owner. I've never owned my own business. So, um, you know, that, that was a big surprise for me. And it was also a big surprise is um, how welcoming the community made us feel. Just so many friends would come up all the time and go, oh, I love your place, or your beer's great, Do, you're doing a great job. So it made me feel good and it was rewarding um, to see that all of our hard work was paying off. Yeah. Um, so it was just a surprise, I guess, to, to know exactly how much work would be involved in this. Right. So looking forward, how do you see Bombshell, how would you want to see it growing in the future? I'd like to continue growing, uh, maybe at a little faster pace. Um, you know, we of course want to be in every bar and restaurant all over the state. That would be awesome. We are, we are in a lot of grocery stores now and we would love to be in every single one of them. So um, that's where I'm kind of hoping to see us. Uh, we've just expanded our, our barrelage capacity. So we will have the ability to make lots and lots of beers. And um, I would like to see us go with a distributor at some point. Um, maybe self-distribute in some areas, but use a distributor for the further outlying areas. I think that would help us grow a little faster. So I'd like to see us do that. And, um, you know, like I said, to, to grow is our goal. You know, we're, we're not, there are a lot of breweries that really don't want to get big. They're very happy to, you know, have a small um, in-house operation and deliver just a few places. But definitely for the future, I'd like to be, you know, the next New Belgium. <laughs> That's a big dream. That's one of my favorite breweries. I love that place. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Bombshell is one of very few 100% owned, women owned. That's that is true. Um, particularly here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe some challenges, but also some benefits that come from that kind of setup? Um, yes, I, I'd say the challenges are, like I said, in the beginning, not knowing how to do a lot of the work. I've been to other breweries in the area and, you know, the, the owner, the head brewer, he did almost all the work himself. You know, he, they know how to do all that and where we had to hire it out. Um, but it's been very successful because a lot of people admire what we're doing. We get a lot of um, people telling us, oh, that's so cool, you know, I can't believe three women own a brewery. You know, it's, so we do get, I think we get a lot of um, people come to the bar. They see us on our website and they go, ah, oh, I've got to go check that out. I can't believe three women own a brewery. And the name Bombshell itself, I think um, a lot of people think that's a, a great, you know, our logo and our color schemes. So. Um, We've only had a few instances where, you know, claiming this all-female owned brewery has kind of not sat well with some people. Some people think, well, that's a little sexist, you know, or we've heard a couple of, um, of our accounts, people have come in and said, I don't really care if they're all female owned or not. I mean, why, why do I care about that? All I want is good beer and, you know, the fact that they're all female owners, that's um, not important to me. But it has probably helped us a whole lot more, given us more advantages than it has hindered us. Yeah. Um, if, if another woman wandered in right now and said she was interested in opening a brewery, what kind of advice would you give to her? Think about it long and hard. Um, do a lot of research. Do your homework. Um, talk to a lot of breweries that are currently in Wake County right now and see if the time is right or if they've missed the mark. Um, I would certainly encourage it, you know, I think that would be great to see more women-owned breweries and I'm, I feel sure that it's, it's growing, but um, like just do your homework, kind of see what the market is you know, like in the area. I don't know what town it would be or what state or what city because it, it varies. Some areas are saturated and some it's just now starting to take off. So I would suggest looking at a market that has a lot more open space for another brewery. Yeah, um, and also kind of thinking of that bigger picture, where do you see like North Carolina beer, the industry across the state, where do you see it kind of trending towards in the next five or 10 years? Um, I don't know how much more it can grow. I, I, there's uh, over 40 in Wake County alone and, and all over the state as well. 
Um, I do see it continuing to grow. Um, we get people coming here all the time saying they're thinking about opening a brewery. So um, I see it definitely growing. Um, there's not but so much room on the shelf in the grocery stores or the bottle shops, and there's not but so many taps in the local bars. And there's a lot of good beer in this state. And, and that's the challenge um, with our sales reps. You know, they go in and then they get an account. The beer's great. They love it. It's sold out in a week. So you want to get the next order. Like, well, we're rotating. We're going to let somebody else have this tap. Um, so that's, I understand it. You know, bars want to keep their beers fresh, like, just like we do. Every time you come in, you want to try something new or different. Um, but there are a lot of rotating taps out there. And I, I just see it getting worse, I guess, in, in the next 10 years, um, unless a lot more restaurants can open. Unfortunately, a good handful of our accounts that have opened have, all, have closed, have gone out of business because the restaurant industry, as you know, is very competitive. So hopefully it'll just keep growing. Yeah. But um, that is a challenge for this state, I think, is the number of um, breweries trying to get on tap and yeah. trying to get on the shelf at the grocery store and stay there. Yeah. Um, well. Aside from the challenges, what's your what's your favorite part about working in the North Carolina in the beer I, industry? Um, I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, it. It's very rewarding. Like I said, when I I've lived in this town for 25 years, we have a lot of friends, and um, it's just very rewarding when all my friends go, "Hey, let's go to Bombshell Friday night." You know, I love that place because there's not that many places in this area to go. And five years ago, there was only like two bars in town, and we were the third. So we were very, very busy on um, all, every night during the first two years. And I, it just makes me feel so good when I come in and see all these people having a good time. And um, it, it just makes me feel very satisfied that all the hard work that we put into it's paying off. Yeah. Well, um, we have a few fun questions that we always like to kind of okay. end the interview with. Okay. So what's, what's your favorite bombshell beer? Mm. That's very easy. My favorite bombshell beer is currently not on tap. Um, we had it last year and it's called Pirate Queen. And Pirate Queen was an IPA um, that was made with a new hop called a cryo hop. It's a powderized hop. It gives the beer a lot of flavor without a lot of bitterness. And this beer was so good. Ellen and I were like loving it, which can kind of be a bad thing. But Pirate Queen, and that was named after a famous um, lady pirate in North Carolina, and her name was Ann Bonnie. Um, so that's that's my favorite bombshell beer. I, yeah. want, I want it to come back. I'm ready for it. Maybe this fall. There you go. So, what about a favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own? Who? Um, honestly, I don't get around to a lot of the other local breweries. You know, to d try their beers enough to find a favorite. Um, I like a lot of the beers in this area, but. I mean, I hate to say it again, but I love New Belgium. Um, I love their beers. They're all good, Citradelic. Uh, I like Foothills, too. Those two, probably Foothills and New Belgium are my two favorite breweries. Um, when I first started here, I liked Bud Light. I, did, I was not a craft beer drinker, I'm going to be honest. Um, but it didn't take very long. You know, the more craft beer you drink, the more your palate craves, the more flavor. I think it's almost like addicting. So um, I migrated away from Bud Light really quick. And the first real bitter hoppy beer that I started liking was a Foothills Hoppium. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably that and uh, New Belgium. Do you remember, were those also kind of your first intro to craft beer? Well, now, somewhat. We have a brewery here in town, Carolina Brewery, that's been open for 23 years. And I used to go to their brewery tours all the time and drink their beer. And I, and I liked them a lot. And they were like the only place in town where you could go buy a fresh keg of beer and have it at your party. So a lot of my friends and neighbors had their beers on tap. And um, so I started liking their beer a lot too. Yeah. So that, that was probably one of the first um, craft beers that I really started enjoying. Yeah. Now I love all of mine. And of I, know my, I know when we go out, um, my husband's always biased. He's like, you know what? I don't see a single beer over there that I would buy over our beer. And not, you know, it's just, you grow to love your beers, you know, you're proud of them and you know what goes into them, you know the ingredients, and you know how long it took to make it, and um, it's uh, great when you, love, when you love your own beer. So. Yeah. So, 
when you're not working here at the brewery, what are some of your favorite things to do? What are you doing? Your I used to play a lot of golf and tennis. I haven't had time for that, um, but I have a dog that I love very much, and I like to walk her two or three times a day. Um, I like to work in the yard. That's my exercise. I don't mind mowing grass. I don't mind, you know, weeding. So I'm a big, big, big stay-at-home mom, right? So I love to do projects. I like to paint a bedroom and refurnish it, and that's kind of satisfying to me. Yeah. Um, and I love, you know, summer sports. We boat a lot. We go boating, and in the winter we like to go snow skiing. So uh, we stay pretty active. Yeah. Um, that pretty well covers the questions I came with. Is there anything else in terms of kind of your piece of the puzzle here, your story that we didn't cover that you would want to touch on? Um, maybe. This isn't a big thing, but, um, you know, the, the word bombshell, a lot of people ask us, where did you get that name, you know, why bombshell? And um, when we first started brewing beer at home, home brewing, we would take free samples. Um, up to the club and have them out on the golf course and people just started calling them the bombshells you know because Ellen and Michelle are both blonde and they love their beer so um, when we started the brewery we were trying to decide if we wanted it to kind of um, be a modern day bombshell you know like some some of the ones in the media today or did we want it to be kind of an older vintage bombshell so we kind of decided to stay with the older vintage um, bombshell and, Marilyn Monroe, Ava Gardner, and you know, those ladies. But when we designed our logo, when we looked at a lot, a lot of them were pictures of women, their faces and their hair, and you know, we would look at those pictures and go, well, I don't know if that really represents us, you know. And we didn't really want to go the real military bombshell girl look like, because there's already other companies out there going that direction. So we decided to make our girl a silhouette so that she could be whoever you want her to be. She can be a modern day bombshell or a vintage bombshell. A lot of people say, oh, who, you know, who's that up there? I go, well, that's, that's your wife or that's your girlfriend. That's who that is. So I just kind of like to explain, you know, a little bit about our logo and why we chose it and um, what it really means. Oh, very cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thank well, you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you.